Hey there everybody, this is Ko speaking again and um, I'm going to make a tutorial today about um, something similar on the screen. We're going to talk about the making of the outer walls of an architectural blueprint and then uh, we'll see how far we get but at, at least if we can get the outer walls of uh, like one of these drawings or these uh, buildings we can then uh, make use of that to start propping it out and filling in with props and um, little uh, chairs and stools and desks and so on. Um, so I'm gonna get started um, I've already created a simple project and downloaded one reference image off of Google. I just went here up at the top and I typed in Office Blueprints and um, I found some results and I just picked, picked one that, um, that I can use to, to kind of demonstrate this process. Okay, cool. So inside of Maya, uh, I've got a clean scene, uh, nothing imported yet. I'm going to show you guys how we can bring in the blueprint as a reference image plane, um, just as a guide to then draw out the template off of. Um, so I'm going to jump to my perspective and orthographic views and then go into my top view. My top view, um, I'm going to uh, project this in the top view and not in my perspective view purely because I don't want it to be attached to the camera for my perspective whenever I'm drawing. I want it to be fixed in space so that I can easily reference it off and then kind of extrude the walls out of. So inside my um, my top view I'm gonna go and um, just quickly uh, turn my my viewport um, window here at the top on. That's an easy hotkey. If you don't have that turned on by default, um, you can hold down control and shift at the same time. And then you can press M and that's going to toggle the, the, the buttons. And then only shift and M will toggle the, the panel menu at the top. So when the panel window is active, I'm going to scroll down to the image planes and import image. And from here, I'm just going to go to my source images on my project and pick out the, the reference image. When I bring it in, it's going to try and put it nice and center in my, my grid. And uh, it's at this point, it's very, very tiny. We need to scale it up to more of an actual scale or proportion. So what I'm going to do is, again, like we did with the... the um, the previous project with the mouse, I'm going to try and use my measuring units on my grid to kind of lay things out so that I can work in a more um, proper measuring unit system. Uh, by default, my uses centimeters, and um, yes, we can change it, but preferably not purely because of some of the tools inside of Maya are designed to work with centimeters. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just uh, use my measuring tool and then place my measuring tool within the unit scale that I think that this building should be uh, be approximately in, in size. So if you look at the image, let's zoom in on here, we can see that this is a, at least a good, let's say, 15 meters across and maybe, uh, let's say, 7 meters wide. Uh, we could try and make it smaller just to compensate for the size. Um, so I've gone into my grid options and I set up, this is my typical setup. Um, so if, if you haven't noticed from my previous tutorials, I always set a 2000 to 100 and then 10 because this divides it up to for the grid length to be a full 10 meters from the center outwards up to here and then I divide each 10 meters into one meter sections for the darker gray lines and then for each meter I divide it with 10 centimeters that will give me the, the 10 increments to get up to a meter and that's that's an easy measuring unit that I stick to and I know it works all the time. Great so with the measuring tool, distance tool, I'm going to hold down X for grid snapping I'm going to snap to my base down here um, and then I'm going to draw this out and kind of reference this to be approximately let's say 800 is 8 meters and 800 to the other side would then give me 16 
um, 1600 and that's obviously 16 meters for those who do not know um, I'm gonna hit enter and I know that if I go up to the second grid on either line then um, uh, to towards the side, the negative x side, we will be approximately within range. So that gives me a good, good um, reference guide to then grab the image plane. I just use the scale tool to scale it up, and if I scale it up to be approximately there, I am in good shape to now go and block this out. So this is now four meters and four meters. Um, I'm not gonna scale it out like this obviously we're going to try and keep everything proportionate to itself so instead of seven meters we're going to go for eight meters i'm going to pull this down underneath the grid so that uh, when i draw i draw on top of the grid but i can still see the image plane underneath it okay so this is going to be my first start off point um, i am going to take my image plane and just drop it into a layer using add to layer so add selected to current layer and then I'm going to reference this layer by making it um, set to reference so I just click here twice to get it to reference and if you want you can also double click on the layer it's going to bring up the edit window and you can change the name of the layer so I'm going to call this ref plane reference plane there we go um, and save. Great, so now it's locked, it's not selectable anymore and um, for now I can also get rid of my measuring tool that I have still in my scene. So in the outliner I clicked here, I'm going to take the, the locators including the distance dimension node and just hit delete and that is now the starting point for the scene. Um, my first initial thought was to maybe draw out some curves and then loft them together but uh, I find that that being a bit more tedious than than I'd like it so uh, I've decided to stick to my general workflow of actually using the modeling toolkit so I can show you guys some other features inside here that um, that I like to use when blocking it out um, everything is going to stay as polygons and that kind of keeps it nice and clean for me so that I, I don't have to go and convert uh, NURB surfaces into polygons and so on. So for this process, I'm going to make use of the, the um, extrude tool, I'm going to make use of the multi-cut, I'm going to make use of the quad draw and uh, we'll see if there's anything else, maybe the bridge tool as well. So back to the top view, I'm going to jump to my top view and just zoom out a bit and for now I'm going to focus on the outer walls and these divisions where the windows are as well as the doors I'm going to tackle them separately I don't want them to be um, uh, broken up yet um, purely because I want to show you guys how we can actually cut holes into objects and later on then uh, just bridge to close the gaps in between so for that um, I'm going to jump in and create a polygon plane. And I'm going to scale the polygon plane approximately the size of the actual image or maybe slightly bigger and I'm going to change its initial amount of sub uh, segments going height and width. Um, you can easily do that by going to the channel box and under the inputs menu um, you'll see if you click on the polyplane you have the options for the parameters to go and fix it. So I'm going to set this to let's say um, let's put this to 2 and 2 for now and uh, we'll add as we go along. I am also going to scale this guy out um, using the well you can either do it through scale tool or you can using uh, use the width value here and then scale it across Great, so I've got it approximately in size. The only problem now is that uh, the polygon plane is in view of my actual image plane, so now I can't really see what I'm doing. Well, there's a quick cheat or trick that you guys can use, and this, this is the X-ray vision. As soon as you click on this button, it's going to X-ray the polygon, and it allows you to see kind of a, a, a slightly shaded ver version of a polygon, 
but um, it allows you to see objects behind it. Great. With that now done, I'm going to jump back to the modeling toolkit and I'm going to make use of the multi cut to start blocking out all the, the main outer walls. I'm going to hold down control and I'm going to hover over my side edge over here and uh, start cutting out the division planes for my inner and outer sections of the walls. Okay, um, I'm going to leave those inner walls for now. Um, we're just going to keep on going with this and just cut it all the way along the outer lines. Okay, this goes in, cut it there and there. Now this is obviously a tedious process, but uh, it's something that um, you, know, you, you can't do without. So it's just a matter of spending a bit of time blocking it out, creating those walls. This might be going outward somewhere. You can leave that as is. And we hit the top. Okay, we've got those. Great. It seems like I've got the main block out of the, the walls. Uh, now that I have that, I can either decide do I want to have them selected and then just uh, select those faces on the inside, delete them, um, and then take the outer walls and just extrude them up and then create the, the inner walls separately? I could do that. Or I might as well decide maybe I want to create them as part of the main block out. Uh, for now, I'm going to keep it simple and just show you guys how we can use what we already have and then just extrude those outer walls and quickly have a good block out. So from the top view, I'm going to go to my face mode and I'm going to get rid of any faces that I do not want. So in the modeling toolkit, when I go to face mode, uh, I have the option of actually raycast select polygons. Instead of clicking, holding down shift and picking all the faces, I can hold on tab and that keeps me in an interactive selection mode. And I can literally click and drag over faces that I that I don't want, um, or that I want to have selected rather. And uh, that keeps it very interactive for me to then quickly go through and uh, select polygons without having to worry about too much um, um, preciseness of selecting faces. Um, you don't have to zoom in too far just to be able to make sure that you select the right stuff. Uh, so I'm going to select all these outer walls, things that I don't want to have selected. Um, you'll see when you have a face selected um, and you go over holding the, down the tab key and you go over the polygon, it's actually going to turn yellow. It means that the face is already selected and that you can deselect it by um, just clicking on it. If the face is not selected, however, it's going to turn red. It means that um, whenever you click over it, it will highlight it for you. So that's how you know the difference between um, um, when something is selected or not using the modeling toolkit. Okay, so I'm going to have these guys selected. There we go. And I'm going to get rid of these two as well. And the outer walls as well. And I'm just going to quickly go all the way around. And there we go. Like that. And I'm almost there. And seems like I've got everything turn back my x-ray vision uh, just to quickly check what's happening. I've got a few that I do not want to delete just to make sure. So this and we've got a nice clean path going all the way around. There's another guy that I can have selected and seems good. Great. So now I'm just going to hit delete. Um, those faces selected, mine's giving me a, a bug here. It says polyplane, 
I'm going to try and sort this out and I'll get back to you guys. Okay, for some reason I was just uh, not happy with my previous selection, so I had to now go in manually and grab these guys and just uh, <laughs> delete them by hand. Unfortunately, sometimes the modeling toolkit is not happy with how you select stuff, and then you'll have to do it manually. <laughs> but uh, hey, that's just life. Um, can I unisolate this? And try again. All the inner walls, we don't want any of this. Get rid of that. All the outer walls, much easier selecting it this way. There we go. Here, have those selected as well. Almost done. Right, so those two there, they and Great. Seems good. I've got the outer walls. Now that I have the block out, um, I'm going to essentially just take the extrude tool and then push it up. Um, and that's going to allow me to quickly move these polygons upwards um, and then give me the exact height of the outer wall. Now, I'm just going to take an approximate height of the outer walls and I'm going to say that um, the outer walls will be about 270, um, 270 centimeters. That's about 2.7 meters. And um, yeah, and that's going to give me the height of the outer walls. So I'm going to go to face mode, go quick face drag select over everything. And I'm going to jump into the extrude tool. And inside the options for the extrude tool, I'm going to set the local Z height to 270 and that's going to give me 270 centimeters in height and that's going to give me my initial block out for the outer walls. Great stuff. So now that I have this I can now individually go in and block out the inner walls and then decide how I'm going to um, start uh, refining the shapes and so on. So with this block out I'm going to go back to the top view and instead of using the multi-cut tool since we don't have a polygon plane to cut anymore I'm going to use the quad draw and show you guys how we can uh, make use of that. So in the, the quad draw options once you jump into it it's initially allowing you to place down vertex points. So the cool thing about this is it's acting very similar to what the create polygon tool does except for we have full features of what the multi-cut tool allows us to do and uh, the connect tool as well as um, the bridge and target weld. So you've got multiple tools built into this one. So um, just to demonstrate this, I'm going to build this wall, this wall and this section. I'm going to click and place down my first initial vertex points just to um, uh, just to block it out. I'm not going to be too accurate at this point. I'm just placing down points that will then represent the, the actual width of the walls. And then later on, I will go in and place these more specifically. Um, I'm going to place down over here as well. Great. So now that I have the points placed down, how do you use them? If you hold down shift, the polygon tool allows you to instantly jump into a mode where you can actually draw out the, um, the face as a, um, an actual polygon. Uh, and once you do that, it's initiating the polygon creation um, for you. And let's say you want to move these points at any time. Let's say they're a bit skew. You can easily just middle mouse drag these guys just to place them in position. Now, some of the hotkeys are slightly different than um, 
uh, in 2015 than it is in 2014. But it's not a train smash. You can always go to the help documentation just to quickly read up on um, what's the difference between how the modeling toolkit, especially the Quadro tool, um, works inside 2014 versus 2015, if you do not have 2015. So uh, yeah, you can easily see I can move these guys around and if I have to add extra divisions just to refine the shape, I can hold down control and then just move over the component. Um, and that's kind of acting like the, the multi-cut for me. And uh, I can just uh, click and then place down that initial point. So that is great. So now that I have these points placed down, I'm gonna go back to object mode um, you can just right click object mode and have it selected um, and then I'm going to go and refine these. I'm going to go to vertex mode and refine. I'm going to just essentially grab all the vertex points and straighten them out. Um, again, typical tedious process. Just have to run through these just to block it out. Uh, so I've got these blocked out happy with the placements where they are and uh, I've got my first initial creation for the wall um, instead what I'm going to do just for the, the sake of the tutorial I'm going to um, connect these two so I'm going to use the target weld um, I want to show you guys how we can use the bridge tool later on to punch a hole through it um, at a specific height um, and then from there you guys can see exactly um, the process for that. So I'm going to do a target weld. I'm going to click and drag on this edge and move it to that one. And that's going to merge it for me. And then after that, I'm just going to have that edge selected. Then press Control Delete. That's going to allow me to get rid of the vertex as well as the edge. So that's a clean line. I'm going to do exactly the same thing to this uh, extra edge loop that we have here. There we go. Great. So now that I have that section, I'm going to do exactly the same thing as previously, how the face is selected, and then go to the extrude tool. The cool thing about the extrude tool, once you hit it, it's actually going to take the initial values that we had previously and then just apply that. So instantly I have the exact same height as what I had previously on my extrusion, and I do not have to worry about any um, writing down of values. Um, so that, that keeps it nice and clean for me so that it's, it's one less step to, to worry about. So for me, I'm going to go and uh, block out a few of these walls. Um, I'm not going to do them all uh, purely because I want to keep the tutorials as short as possible. Uh, I want to try and put it in 10 minutes. So when I get back, I will uh, do a few of these walls and then, um, um, then we can continue from there. Okay, so I've spent some time actually blocking out some of these walls. I've used the exact same method that I've, I've demonstrated where I just uh, use the quad draw tool and draw out these, these edges um, and then bridge them together. And then initially uh, that's going to be my, my block out phase. And then once I have these polygons, I can then just um, you know select them. And then once I have them selected, just use the extrude tool and uh, that's going to give me my other walls. So I've got something selected here that is causing a bit of a, a problem. And um, let's quickly have a look again. I'm going to extrude this. And it seems like, yeah, I might have double edge uh, extruded them here somewhere. So I'll quickly fix that. I mean, this is something that happened purely because I, I grabbed an edge and I um, extruded it um, and ended up having a bit of a problem. So um, I'll be back with you in a few seconds just to have that nice and fixed so we can continue with the tutorial. So I decided to rather show you guys what the problem actually is so that if something like this occurs on your work that you know how to go and fix it manually. Um, so I was looking through the polygons and I saw that I have a double edge uh, of double face right on top of this corner and that's the guy that's skewing out when you're doing the extrude. So I'm literally just going to um, get rid of it uh, and that's going to allow me to then uh, 
successfully do the extrusion. Grab these faces once more and hit extrude and then I'm going to make these uh, back to 720 uh, or what's this now? So I'll have to probably do it manually. Oh, there's not 720, it's 270. My mistake there. Yeah, perfect. That's perfectly aligned. Great. So now that I have the main block out for, for the interior walls, and they're nicely separated from the the um, exterior walls, we can now essentially uh, apply some sort of a um, a uh, different color paint on the inside than we do with the outside. Um, with the initial block out for the actual walls, I'm going to go and tackle the areas where the, the actual uh, door will fit inside of and then uh, show you guys how we can punch holes through it and then um, kind of create the, the, the socket for the door or window. Um, I'm going to go through this and uh, let's take this one for instance, that's door, um, door opening back outwards. Um, I'm going to uh, select some of these faces, straighten them out, uh, these edges, line them up nice and clean, and then put them right on the border where I'm going to get rid of the face extrusion and um, frame on it so I can zoom in on that section. Great. So. Well, if you think about it, the door does not go all the way up to the 270 marks. Uh, a door is usually about 2, two meters, 2.2. Let's take 2.2 for now, even if that's not 100% accurate. Uh, it's just the idea that counts at this point. So I'm going to take the, the height of where I want to cut it up, um, and then I can use using um, the measuring tool, distance. I'm going to do a vertex snap this time to, let's say, this corner over here. And now, uh, from the top view, or from rather from the side view, I'm going to um, zoom out a bit and hold down shift and then draw out a line. And that's going to give me the exact unit width, uh, or height rather, uh, that I want to cut this this model up. I'm going to put it to about 2.2. Uh, hit enter to exit the tool. If you want to be more precise, you can always go back and reselect that that um, locator, and then manually adjust it using the move tool until you get to a point that you're satisfied. Um, for the purpose of getting it perfectly um, two. 220, um, I can always go to the locator and then type in 220 and that's going to reposition exactly to a 2.2 uh, meter mark. Great. So now that I have that done, I can use that as my, my uh, line height and then cut the, the, the door, door um, height so I can still keep part of the, the, the wall, upper wall. Um, for the sake of um, seeing the locator a little bit clearer. I'm going to have the locators as well as the distance measuring tool um, selected and then store it inside of a layer which I can then color code to something like red which will allow me to much easy and clearly see um, the the line and um, make makes your life a lot easier when you're trying to to draw these these uh, measures. Great. So back into the modeling toolkit, I'm going to go to multi cut and I'm going to go and select my wall that I want to cut. And I'm going to just create my basic edge loop. And uh, it's about there. Uh, it, it might not be perfect. I'm going to hold down control and click, and that's going to give me the perfect cut all the way around the walls. And with that selection, now I'm going to make sure that um, that I'm perfectly on that edge line. And in fact, I am 100% accurate. I was just very lucky this time. <laughs> Sometimes it happens and uh, it's always a, a big bonus if you can do that. Great. So it's a line that runs all the way through the, the, the model now, uh, which will allow me to very easily go through and uh, cut any walls at the 2.2 the meter uh, mark. Um, and I don't have to worry too much about 
um, you know, trying to create each door at a different height and so on and so forth. So now that I have the, the edge loop cut, uh, I do not need the measuring tool. So I'm just going to hide the layer one for the measure. And uh, I'm going to go to face mode. And then I'm going to pick the faces um, that I want to cut. And this is going to be the edge loop selection here, except for the top, uh, top section over here. Gonna get rid of that holding down control, deselect, make sure it's only those. Great. I'm gonna hit delete. So now that I have the hole punched into the wall, we need a way to kind of bridge that together so that we fill the inner side. We do not keep it hollow as it is right now. Um, first things first, you need to have two edges selected for the, the bridge tool to work successful. Inside the modeling toolkit, you'll see Here's the bridge tool. And the bridge tool essentially asks for a set of, of edges to, to bridge. Now, it doesn't have to be only two edges. You can have more than two edges as long as they're equally the same amount of edges on either side of the selection. And then when you hit bridge, it's going to create a face for us that will fill in the gap in between. I'm going to do the stop section now. Have that selected, bridge, and that's going to quickly cap the, the inner side of the wall for me. Done, perfect. Um, I do see that the wall is a bit skew, so I am going to go in and uh, just make this nice and clean. I uh, just pull this out and straighten that edge for me. Perfect. I'm also going to do it from, from here. Grab these guys and um, just pull them together. Great. So now that I have this uh, wall uh, punched through, I can now easily go in and actually start uh, um, adding the actual frame and then creating the door and so on. So this technique will be used to create both windows and um, doors and any other type of uh, hole punching um, situation. For now, I think that's it. That I, uh, This is the Im info that I wanted to provide you guys. And if there's any questions, please leave them in the, the comments below. And please subscribe. I'm always there willing to help you guys. Um, until next time, uh, see you then. Cheers.